I gotta be honest with you, I rarely use my phone as a photography tool. When you're used to carrying a camera with you everywhere you go, the phone gets relegated into this device that is meant for capturing candid videos or reference shots to review later. But when Xiaomi reached out to test drive their 14 Ultra that was co-engineered with Leica, well, I thought this might be a great opportunity to revisit some of the biases I had to mobile phone photography partly because someone else was gonna pay me to do it. The biggest question I had was, what does the mobile photography experience feel like when you take the latest technology with respect to mobile sensors and pair them with the innovations from a true photography company like Leica? Turns out it's really promising. The main selling point of the Xiaomi 14 Ultra is the new one inch CMOS sensor that can capture up to 50 megapixel images with its Vario Sumolux branded optics. With a 23 millimeter focal length, optical image stabilization, and a stepless aperture that ranges from f1.63 to f4, it's arguably the best components you'll find in a mobile device right now. But what gives it character is the Leica influence. First, you have two image profiles to choose from. Essentially, these image profiles are gonna dictate how the sensor data is translated into an image. Leica Authentic was engineered by Leica, and this is something that delivers a natural look with a good amount of contrast. Then you have Leica Vibrant, which was engineered by Xiaomi and Leica, and this is something that gives you a more vivid interpretation of reality. I found myself gravitating to that Leica authentic image profile and that's because it felt more true to life, right? And when I was capturing these images, it had more depth to them and, and the shadows, well, they weren't afraid to be shadows. It didn't have this look that you would find in a lot of these modern phones where it was very HDR looking and, and things were often quite flat. I really like this image profile and I'm glad that this is something that you can start your photo from. There's also a collection of filters and a handful of them are Leica filters that you can then apply onto your image to further develop the look. And if you're asking me, the best one has to be that Leica monochrome high contrast. This is something that I found myself putting on a bunch of my images and it just had a very dramatic look. In the instance you want more information, there's also a 16-bit DNG file that you can capture in Xiaomi's Ultra Raw mode. And this just gives you more information by using the full capacity of the sensors and the processor and the, well, image processing pipeline to give you a more robust file to edit. Now, for the uninitiated, this might sound trivial, but the polish around the user interface and how you interact with the camera has really impressed me. As a photographer, let me tell you, this feels like a photographer's tool. You don't have this camera that, you know, as you move it around, it's jumping between macro standard or night modes or dipping into a very low shutter speed. This is something that all the tools that are at your fingertips, they're laid out in a very elegant way and you customize it and those settings lock. So every time you launch your camera app, it goes to how you used it. And what I also appreciate it is that there's even a tiny information button. So if you are unfamiliar with some of the modes or the features, you can quickly just hit that button and get educated. This is something that's designed for photographers, I feel, right? Where instead of a company forcing you into their creative paradigm, you have a company that's catering to the photographer mindset. Beyond the main sensor, you have three additional rear cameras at 12 millimeters, 75, and a periscope pack 120. These are all housing a 50 megapixel sensor that you'd find in most premium mobile phones. And yes, it is smaller than that main sensor, but it is still very capable. And more importantly, it gives you options in the field. What surprised me the most was the quality of that 120 millimeter perspective. This is something that opens up a new creative lane where it really closes the gap between you and a subject. And if you use it creatively, it can tell a whole different story. You know, I think of someone like Ralph Gibson who, you know, spent years walking around New York with his 135 millimeter lens on his Leica M camera and just getting a different perspective, right? This is something that can feel unnatural that you might relegate for, I shouldn't say relegate, but you might dedicate for portraiture or architecture or, you know, maybe even fine art or still life. But using this, if you, if you just push yourself into this realm, you might find yourself capturing stories that you otherwise 
but otherwise might go unnoticed. All right, I gotta talk about the photography kit from Xiaomi because like the Tin Man longing for a heart, I yearn for this contraption, this magical little device that you could throw onto your mobile phone and suddenly it would allow you to use it as a camera. It would just feel more ergonomic. It would also give you more buttons and shortcut options and even have a little bit of battery in there just to top you up. With this, you get everything I mentioned in a pocketable size that's easy to put on and use right away. And there's even a few extra tricks where you can integrate the wrist strap so it just feels more secure and even switch out the filter thread here to put in another decorative piece or use a 67 millimeter filter. So if you have an ND filter, if you have a diffusion filter, you can suddenly put that on your mobile device and start shooting with it. When this was announced, I was genuinely excited and curious and after using it, I can honestly tell you, I wish every major brand offered an accessory like this. It's something that as soon as you pick up, especially as a photographer, you immediately see the value in it. It suddenly makes sense. So I gotta imagine that if you're looking at this device, you know, especially with the Leica partnership, that you are a creative, that you are a bit of a photographer yourself. And if that's the case, I highly recommend this accessory. It just takes the experience to another level. I should also mention that this is an incredible device for video, right? Going back to that main sensor, you can shoot up to 8K video or a more distinguished 4K. There's a master cinema mode in this camera that allows you to get a great result in the moment while retaining more highlight and shadow information. There's just more range to the actual video file. But what I appreciated more is that you can capture 10-bit log video on this camera. And what makes this impressive is that all of a sudden I can use this for any mixed media content, whether it's for social or a brand campaign, whatever it may be, I can suddenly start integrating this into workflows that I already have going on. Before I wrap up this video with my closing thoughts, I thought I'd quickly run through some of my other favorite features. The device itself is pretty top heavy where, you know, the sensor, the camera, the lenses, it sits at the top of the phone. So I found myself holding it differently than my typical device. But in doing so, I kind of just realized that it feels nice, right? You have this aluminum trim on the side that feels secure around your fingertips and the back just has this smooth vegan leather to it that has this sort of svelteness to it, right? It just feels comfortable. It, it feels secure. I, I appreciated that. The 6.73 inch AMOLED display with P3 color gamut up to 120 hertz refresh rate and 3000 nits of brightness. Look, I can go through all the specs. All you need to know is that it is a beautiful display. I genuinely enjoyed looking at photos and watching videos on this display. I found myself going to this device first to look at videos and watch trailers and watch clips because it was that good. And I have to say, unlocking your device by using a fingerprint reader that's under the display, I think that's the way that all devices should be doing it right now. It's just really convenient. Now let's move on to the 1400 pound robot elephant in the room called Android. For most of us, when we are picking our device, we are met with this fork in the road, iOS or Android. And this decision is often made by the tribe that is around us, right? How we communicate to the people we care most about. And if you find yourself in an Android world, this is an impressive device. It's a premium device, right? If you are in the market for something that sits at the top of the list, this is up there and with that Leica engineering and influence and collaboration, you have something that really caters to the photographer. I can't tell you whether you should get this device or not because one, I don't ever do that in any of my videos and two, this is a sponsored video to begin with. But I can share a bit into my life. You see, I found myself in this place where I have my device that has all my productivity tools on it and a ton of distractions, right? Even though I live a creative life and have to use social media and certain apps to, you know, develop content, share content, it can become a distraction. So I set up a set of rules and restrictions where I would restrict these apps at certain times of the day. I would even move my device to a different part of the room or a different room just to keep me productive. And it, allows me to get stuff done, 
But I've toyed with this idea of having a second mobile device where my primary device allows me to stay productive, the secondary one would just let me be creative and offer some differentiation. And yeah, I know this is an incredibly existential, frivolous, self-prescribed first world problem to discuss, but well, I guess what I'm trying to say is that the experiment has been a fun one. I thought I'd use the Xiaomi 14 Ultra for a month, share my thoughts and move on. Instead, I find myself using this thing way more than I thought I would and treating it more like a connected camera. It brings a lot to the table where someone like me that's constantly traveling, regularly shooting and often publishing can see a lot of value in. And I guess this is all to say that, well, I'm gonna be using this device for a lot longer than expected. For those of you that have made it to the bonus round, thank you so much. I, I truly appreciate the collection of you that watch all the way to the end, especially for these adjacent videos that kind of sit outside the core photography content. So if you've made it this far, let's try something fun. I want you to flip the bird in the comments so I know who you are. Um, look, I'll be honest with you. I don't, I, I'm very careful with the, the partnerships and, and sponsored videos. And this one felt like something that I had to try out. I had to test out because there is this Venn diagram where it kind of permeates into the things that I talk about. So I got to give a shout out to the Xiaomi team for allowing me to produce this video. And let's be honest, these productions, these partnerships and sponsorships do allow me to go and make some of the more ambitious travel content as well something that I have coming out very soon that being said I'd love to hear what you think about this about this device this proposition let me know what you think in the comments down below I'm, I'm genuinely curious what other photographers how they interpret this device and I imagine there's many of you again looking at the analytics many of you are interacting with me through an iOS device so I'm curious to hear your thoughts as well Anyway, this is enough for one video. I appreciate all of you that have made it this far. As always, my name's Gadgen. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.